What if your systems at a data center were knocked offline by a disaster? Your critical systems are down. There's not any clear answer if anything at that data center is even recoverable. While having regular backups of your data would be enough to recover from such an event, let's be realistic. Even with the best backup systems in place, restoring from a disaster takes time. And when every minute counts, you need a solution to get you up and running quickly. That's where continuous replication comes in. With Zen Orchestra, you can schedule a differential copy of your VMs to be sent on a recurring schedule to a second location. So if disaster strikes, you can recover quickly. With continuous replication, your recovery point objective is going to be much faster than going through the usual backup and restore process. In this video, I'll walk you through how to set up continuous replication with Zen Orchestra, along with how to automatically validate those VMs are able to boot at the second location, because as we know, untested backups or Untested replication plans are really just wishful thinking, so let's get started. Now, my goal in this video is to focus on Zen Orchestra and continuous replication, but there will be some questions people may have about, well, I've stuffed 10 or 20 terabytes into my virtual machine. How am I supposed to replicate it from site A to site B? And I want you to reference my video on storage design where I answer many of those questions of why that's not a good idea to do and better ways to set that up, such as tying iSCSI to your storage device with Windows, etc. That video you'll find linked in the description below. Now let's talk about the disaster recovery planning using Zen Orchestra and XCPNG. I'm not actually replicating to two off-sites here. I'm going to be doing it in my lab, but I'm simulating a off-site situation. The simulation here means we have the production site set up as best possible, but the scenario we're dealing with is the production site has collapsed in a way that we can no longer access it. It is completely gone and offline. How quickly can we spin up our disaster recovery site? Well, a few things here. First, this is not a replacement for backups, so of course we would still have our backups. And I show Zen Orchestra living here on the production site, but you would of course be able to easily spin up Zen Orchestra over here on the disaster recovery site. You'd want routable networks between these two sites. So these are physically separate sites with their own firewalls and their own settings. And you'd want the management network that all the data is traversing to be routable between two sites. But of course, in order to spin up these VMs at the disaster recovery site, we would have to have a network that would not be necessarily routable easily between the sites because it would have the same IP range. So we have the production network here and production network here. And this is an important aspect of it because if you go to the DR site, you would use whatever methodology you have. And there's different methodologies for this. As I said, I won't get too off topic, but you'll point the users at the DR site and those servers will live at those same IP ranges they did before to attach to that same production network. So that's an ideal way to set this up. Now, the phrase continuous replication may imply that it's going to continuously replicate, but bandwidth limitations will probably restrict just how frequently you do this. The first time you do it, it has to replicate the entirety of the VM from production site to the DR site, but then any incremental changes will be sent on the schedule you set. As I said, bandwidth limitations might be the restricting factor that you have here. And what we want to do is send these incremental changes on a schedule and then validate that the systems will start on the DR site. And that's the whole process we're going to go through. And I'm going to show you how to set that up. Now I'm using XCPNG version 8.3. And I'll also point out I'm using the latest version of Zen Orchestra, the self-compiled version that is available here in March of 2025. That's why you see the little no support option under here. If you would like to follow along in a home lab, you can completely do this with this version. For those of you that want to run this in actual production environments, I do recommend buying a support contract from Bates to help support the project. Now I have my one really important server right here. We'll go ahead and expand it out. So I want to show that there's a tag on it that says YouTube, because we're going to build this backup job with tags, because when you're doing it in a larger scale environment, that's the way to do this. And we'll show why in a moment after we run our first backup, we'll show how we can easily add other systems without having to update the backup job. So now we want to go ahead and create a new backup. We're going to go to new VM backup and replication. And we'll give it a name of send really important servers to the backup bunker. Then we're going to choose smart mode over here. And we want to say resident on what pool? Well, we're going to choose pool of Ryzen because backup bunkers where we're sending it to. So there's two separate pools, just as we showed in the earlier slides. So we want to only back up things resident on this pool. And we want to select the tags of YouTube. So that will select really only one VM right now. And it shows matching VMs right here as only one. Now we need to set what type of backup we're doing. And we're going to choose the continuous replication. 
And what continuous replication does versus one of these other ones, Delta Backup creates backups that go to the storage repositories for backups referred to as remotes. Continuous replication is going to send it to a storage target on another system. So let's go ahead and choose the backup bunker storage because we want to send it to the storage on the other pool. And of course, this prerequisite is, as I mentioned earlier, that Zen Orchestra can talk to both pools, which it can. So we're going to replicate these VMs over there. Now, the backup bunker storage does have similar network names. So that goes back to that mentioning of having a production network. So the networks match on each side. That way, when the VM starts, it'll have the same IP ranges. Now, we're going to go here to advanced settings. And this is where you have a few options. Because in 8.3, we have MBD and CBT. Those are network block device and change block transfer to transfer this available. This is a much faster way to do it. You should have this enabled, but it does require your at least running version 8.3 to turn this on. It goes a little out of scope of showing where that is, but it's just a checkbox on each one of the VMs. And purging the snapshots. Do you want to keep a snapshot here that you can revert to? That's a personal choice. The downside, of course, of keeping a snapshot, if you're wondering why everyone just doesn't do it, is that increases the disk pressure because any of the changes have to also be dealt against that snapshot. So it's kind of your choice if you want to keep any snapshots or purge them. I'm going to go ahead and choose purge them because I have other backup processes, but this kind of comes down to you and your storage setup. Now, full backup interval, you may want to consider this. This means after so many times, in case you're worried about the changes getting out of sync, as in the chain getting reset. This is what forces a reset of that chain in case you want to do it on a schedule. So you could say like every 20 times I do an incremental, go ahead and restart that over at the beginning. It's completely optional. It's just a way of doing some data assurance if the chain gets out of date. But because we're going to be doing backup health checks, we're always going to be validating whether or not that chain is good because we're going to make sure that these start on the other side. And if you have any other things, like you want to limit the transfer speeds, you could do that here. I don't really need to do any of that. So let's go over here and we've got to set the schedule. And we'll set the schedule to say, let's do this hourly. Every hour I'd like to send a copy over. And I should retain two copies. And I want to do a health check on these because this is a really important validation is not just did it get sent over, but will they boot? And if you're not familiar with the way health checks work, it boots up a copy of the system. Now, you can actually do the health check in different locations, but it's very recommended that you would do this on the backup bunker itself, that entire pool. So we're actually going to say, do the health check here. Don't try to restore it anywhere else replicate it over, have it there. It'll do a clone. It'll remove the network interface with the health check. Then it will validate that it boots by looking for the tools to be loaded. And once the tools are loaded, it makes a call and it says, great, this system has confirmed that it boots up at least at a point where the tools load and that validates that the backups must be good. So this is an option here. And then we scroll down and we can set this to be every hour. And then you can choose if you want it to be every day, et cetera, but we'll just leave it right here. I'm not even worried about enabling because this is just a demo. And then we're going to go ahead and click Create. Now, if we go back to the server, we can see that the backup job is attached to this particular server. We could also run it from the overview side of the backups. But let's go ahead and run it and show what happens. So the system has kicked off the backup. It's going to do the export over to the other server. And once it's there, I'll go ahead and fast forward this, but it gets there relatively fast. And by the way, this is only running on a little mini PC that has a two and a half gig connection, but they're not particularly large VMs that we're demoing here. All right, the backup job completed. Let's go over to the backup logs and it says, send really important servers to the backup bunker and we'll go through the process here. So here's the process using the MBD transfer. Snapshot has been deleted. It sent it over to the backup bunker, did a health check and, and all these green dots mean the backups went perfectly fine. And it says type full, duration three minutes. So let's just run it again, and it'll run through the process a second time, but it's going to go through it much faster because it's only going to do incremental changes. And because we just did this, there's barely any changes, but let's walk through the process because it'll still do a health check. So it's still going to take a little bit of time. So go ahead and run it this time. And it's going to go through this much, much faster. Matter of fact, it's going to just be a bunch of flashes on the screen. I'm not playing this at any accelerated speed. This is just the process it runs through when it does it when there's barely any changes. Matter of fact, if we look over here, you can even see it doing the health check right now, which means it's waiting for this to boot. You know, so there's no network adapter. And as soon as this is done booting, it's going to destroy this VM. So it's seen the call that came from the tools being loaded and now there's two copies on here. If we go back over here to our backup logs again, so overview, 
logs. It only transferred four megabytes, took 29 seconds. That did include the health check. So same process again, where it runs through the process, does it each time, validates it. Now, if we wanted to test things ourselves, we could do that as well. So we go over here to the really important server and we hit start. Now, there's two options here when you try to start. It's a forbidden operation for a reason. It's on the same network settings, so it would interfere, especially if this was on the same network, with that other system. So we can force the start of it, which will break the chain, but I'd rather just start a copy. Starting a copy doesn't do much else other than give it a new UID. It also will give it a new MAC address, but this is another way you could quickly validate. So we'll hit start a copy and go back over here. And it leaves all the backup information, adds the word clone here. So I know I'm starting a cloned copy, but I can also validate myself that this starts once it's booted, validate it, stop it and delete it. And it doesn't affect the actual backup job itself. So if I needed to do something with the server on the DR site for some further validation, maybe that it connects to other things, I could do that here. Of course, IP addresses may change because the MAC address changed. So do that uh, at your own risk. But we'll go ahead and remove it now because we don't want it in the list anymore. Let's go ahead and add another really important server. We have really important server two, and we're just gonna add the tag YouTube to it. By using tags, any VM tagged with, well, in this case, YouTube, automatically becomes part of the replication. So let's go ahead and run this again and show you what happens when you have more than one VM. And we'll just run the backup from here, hit okay. Now, it's not backed up that other VM, so the first VM will go really fast. The second one's going to go, well, a little bit slower. It's going to take a couple of minutes because the first time it's replicating across the site. So we'll go ahead and fast forward till that one's done. All right, going back over here to our backup logs. It took a few minutes to get this first time exported, but the same process has gone through, but now it has two virtual machines in here. Really important server and really important server two. And each one goes through the same process of going to the backup bunker storage transfer, validating that it boots and does the health check. So now it does two health checks, the first VM, then the second VM. And once again, all green top to bottom for that success. Now, if we go back over here to home, you'll notice now there's only one copy of it because we ran it once and we can do the same thing again. And it doesn't matter if we kick the backup off from either one of the servers because it's doing all of the servers that are in this backup. So let's go ahead and run this job one more time. The second time it's gonna run really fast. We can do this in real time, watch it do the duplication because the second copy that it creates is simply just the differential changes again. So these two copies that are on the backup server don't take long to clone and then once again, clone again for the health check and then destroy after this boots. Once again, it's going through the boot process. Same thing, no network attached. And it's doing this for each one of the servers. So it's doing this twice, validating that boots, it's destroying that server, health checking really important server two, so on and so forth. And now you can see we have important server two and important server. Now, just to go back over to the host to show how the pools look, here are the two main hosts that I have. That's that's my Ryzen pool and the backup bunker pool. It just has one host in it. It's just a little mini PC. And as I noted, it doesn't take a whole lot to be able to do this. This only even has a two and a half gig network connection on it. So even at a two and a half gig network connection, you can see how fast this goes because it's only doing the changes from the VM. Now, for those of you wondering if this is a new feature of Zen Orchestra, it's actually been around since 2016 and it has matured a lot all the way here in 2025. I did a video about it about six years ago, but it's also matured since then because the health checks weren't available. So that's why I'm kind of doing the same video again, but showing how it works here in March of 2025. And of course, they're always making improvements on this. And if you're wondering, do large scale companies use this? Yes, absolutely. I was consulting on this and realized that my demo was a little out of date that I would normally send a customer that's asking about us uh, assisting in the design and planning of their DR solution. So I wanted to make an updated video to share with all of you because this is actual work people hire us for. And I always like to share with the community exactly how I do it. So I'm kind of talking myself out of consulting. So if you can do it yourself, I guess you wouldn't need me. But if you do need me, as I mentioned, you can head over to our website and hire us. I didn't stick the ad roll in this particular video. I'll save you that. And I just want to do a community education on this. And as I said, I did this with the open source version. So I show that you can absolutely do this in your home lab. You can take some mini PCs and have one that's just a at the ready DR that maybe you want to put off site. This is absolutely something you can scale down to the home lab, but absolutely scales up to large enterprise companies that yes, are doing this 
between data centers. Now, I love hearing from you. Leave your thoughts and comments down below. Like and subscribe to see more content from the channel. Click on the playlist down below for the entire XCPNG playlist. It has getting started with XCPNG, showing you how to build things from source and other types of backup tutorials. Watch that storage design video because, well, a lot of people seem to have questions about storage design and may not be aware of best practices. If you want to connect with me, head over to lawrencesystems.com or you can join our newsletter or just connect with me on whatever socials you find me on there. All right, and thanks.